If you are looking to get started in rental property investing, right, and you've never done it before, right, this is your first foray into getting a rental property, right? You're a complete newbie, a complete noober, noober duber, man. I'm talking about the people that are at the very beginning stages of getting into real estate investing. This show is going to be for you. This episode is for you guys, right? I'm talking, I'm going to break this stuff down for you guys, how to get your first rental property on a step-by-step -step basis. I'm going to break this down to the absolute most simplest forms, right? So my goal with today's show is to take somebody who's like literally been like, oh, rental properties? Yeah, I heard those were cool, but I have no idea what to do from this this point on. Like, what what's going on? Like, I'm talking people that have only ever experienced real estate uh, by either buying their own home or even people who've never even gone through the process of buying their own home. You people are the people that I'm trying to talk to today, the people I'm trying to assist today. I want to give you guys just a baseline, simplistic, way to understand how this process will work and whether or not you think it's for you. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and I am here to talk to you guys about real estate, right? That's what we do on Holton Wise. We do a lot of stuff in regards to real estate. And to be honest with you, uh, I feel like some of our content, a lot of things we do, uh, it, it's probably a lot more geared uh, towards the people that are a little further along in the real estate journey uh, than a lot of the people that are going to be watching this today, right? So today is for all the newbies out there, the people that are literally just getting started, right? If we're comparing it to like, you know, being a baby slash kid slash adult, right? We're talking like this is like crawling like rattles and pacifiers right the very beginning i wanted to help you guys out today the people uh that are this is like literally your first look into this the first time you've thought about doing this and then obviously if you want to take things from there and it sounds like a good idea to you you'll want to definitely subscribe to holding wise tv to continue on our content because nobody folks nobody's peeling the layers back in the real estate industry like we are we got some pretty wild stuff Freaking tenants doing this, tenants doing that. I'm talking evictions, murder, bed bugs, drug overdose, cash on cash returns, how to calculate returns, how to do seller financing, wholesale flip. We, we do it all. But today, today's the very beginning. This, this is like your starting point. So if like you have no knowledge on real estate, today is how I'm going to help you learn how to go through the process of getting your very first rental property. And I made a nice fancy little uh, chart here, right? In numerical order. So it's very easy to follow along. So step number one, folks. If you have decided, you're like, you know what? I'm going to give landlord in a try. I'm going to give real estate investment a try. I'm going to get me one of them rental properties. What do I do now, James? Well, the first thing you need to do is get yourself pre-approved for a mortgage, okay? That's step one. Before you could buy a house, before you determine what house you're going to buy, where you're going to buy it, what you're going to do with it, you need to know how much money you can invest, right? How much can you buy the house for, right? If house is in the area you think you want to buy in or a million bucks, but you can only get pre-approved for 500000 you got a problem, right? So you got to figure that out before you worry about the next stuff, right? So the very first step to the process of uh, buying your very first rental property, folks, is going to get pre-approved for a mortgage. Now, uh, if you do not have a lender, don't you worry, folks. We have lenders for you. You could click the notes below and get hooked up with our list of lenders who will loan to investors in all 50 states and abroad. If uh, not, feel free to call around, call your local banks. Your local bank is a great place to start, right? Local credit unions, things of that nature. Uh, but we've got the resources if you need them. Now, it's very important you understand this here. If your only experience in buying a home so far uh, has been buying your personal residence, it's a little different when you get pre-approved uh, for a rental property, okay? Your personal residence, you're looking at down payments 1%, 3%, 3.5%, 5%, 10%, right? Very rarely do people that buy their own personal home put down 20 25%. 
in rental property space, in the rental property space, the rental property business, you're looking at about 25%, right? So if you want to buy a $100,000 rental property, you're looking at 25 grand down, right? Likewise, if you're trying to buy your first home, same $100,000 house, you'd be looking at like three grand down. So it's a totally different ballgame. So remember, you're going to want to put down 25%. You don't get to get those 3% down, 5% down, 10% down loans on non-owner occupied stuff, which is what your first rental property would be, right? So you got your 25%. First of all, see how much you can get approved for and then make sure you have 25% of that, okay? Now, after you've figured out how much you have, how much you can buy, what your buying power is, you want to choose a market, right? I said, if you're in a market where the rentals are going to cost a million and you're only pre-approved for 500 k well, that market probably ain't going to make sense, right? So if you're only approved for five, you know, you're approved for half, right? 500 k of the million, your own home market might not be the market for you, right? So you got to choose a market based on your buying power, right? For instance, my company, we run a $75 million rental portfolio in the Ohio market, right? And we do this for investors all over the world. Why? Because you can pick up rental properties for 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars. You can pick up multifamily apartment buildings for like 125, 150,000 dollars, right? Duplexes for 100K. That's only 25K out of your pocket, folks, right? So if you're somebody who's got 100 grand, you're pre approved for 400 grand. In my market, you can get four duplexes, right? So there's a lot of people that come to my market from other markets, right? Like California, New York, things of that nature, right? So choose your market based upon your budget, right? Our market in particular is perfect for a lot of people that are priced out of their own market, right? Number three, once you've chosen, chosen your market, you need to either hire a realtor or you got to go out and find motivated sellers yourself. Now, to be honest with you, I think you're going to get the very best deals by finding motivated sellers. And the best way to find motivated sellers is to hit them with marketing. And I have a video on how to market to motivated sellers and who the most motivated sellers are. I'll put that in the notes below. But I'll skip all that and save you some time and let you know it's probably direct mail. And if you want to direct mail people, you need to get lists of motivated sellers. So you can watch my videos to figure out who these motivated sellers are if you really want. Uh, and then you got to mail to these lists of motivated sellers. And you can do all that with PropStream. And I have a uh, link below the video. It's going to go ahead and give you a free trial to PropStream. So you can go ahead and try that. And then after your free trial expires, if you want to keep using it, you get a lifetime discount because you're a Holton Wise TV viewer. Okay? You'll get the best deals finding motivated sellers. But remember, this video, I'm talking to the people who've never done this before, the people at the very beginning stages. You people are probably the people that need to hire a realtor. Now, most realtors, admittedly, are not geared to working with investors. You hear investor-friendly realtor. Most realtors don't know, don't know dick about rental property investing, folks. They really don't. But here's the thing. If you're this new at this, a realtor can get you through a lot uh, of the issues, right? Like writing the purchase agreement, making sure you get the right kind of, like there's just so much uh, to learn. I, I think it would be insane for a first time rental property buyer to try to do it without a realtor. Now you have to understand realtors, 90% turnover in the industry, almost nine out of every 10 realtors is going to quit. You meet 10 realtors this year, nine of them probably won't be realtors next year. So it's not like there's like a bajillion amazing realtors out there, you're going to have to do some work to find yourself the right realtor, especially if you're an investor, because, again, most of that one out of ten realtors that remains a realtor doesn't even work with investors. So I'm not saying it's an easy battle, but you really need a real estate agent in your corner when you're just getting started. Now, after you get your feet wet and you start understanding what's going on and you know what you're doing and you don't have to watch a video that is like broken this down to this very basic level, yeah, you could start moving on to finding your own motivated sellers. But my recommendation to you guys, you could do either, but it would be to start with a realtor, right? Now, once you got that realtor, or if you're crazy, batshit crazy, and you're trying to find your own motivated sellers, you got to pick a property, right? So for those of you that are working with a realtor, let's say you chose a market, right? You're like, hey, man, I want to buy. I'm pre-approved, right? Your realtor's going to want to see your pre-approval letter. I'm pre-approved for $100,000. I want to buy a duplex in X city. Right. So then that realtor, they're going to find you a bunch of properties in and around that hundred thousand dollar price point in that city. That would be your safest bet, your most, your most simple bet. Right. So then from there, 
pick the one that you like the most, right? Pick the one that hits your cash on cash return numbers, hits your cash flow goals. And folks, if you need to understand uh, how to come up with your cash on cash numbers, your cash flow goals, understand how to calculate cash flow, just watch any of the, what did I put out? I think I put out 2,000 episodes of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holdwise TV. Watch any one of those and you'll learn how to calculate the cash on cash return, the cash flow of these rental properties, right? So you've had your realtor find you a property you like, you go under contract. That means you put in an offer, right? And the seller accepts the offer. That's why I think it's super important uh, for you guys to have a realtor for your first one, right? Because trying to come up with your own purchase agreement that covers everything versus using one of the boilerplate ones that all of the brokerages in your area are using would be batshit crazy on your first deal. Please, don't try to swing for the fences, man. Just try to get through your first deal. Don't worry about extracting every single penny out of your first deal by trying to cut out realtors or go this route to get that because more often than not you're going to end up screwing it up okay like just to be real you need the education you need the experience you need a real estate agent uh to help walk you through the stuff on your first one right getting through that process right so you're under contract now okay so you haven't closed on it you don't own the property yet but it's no longer on the market it's under contract with you and it's probably going to be contingent on a home inspection if it's not it should be right you got to do due diligence man you should not buy a property without a home inspection you need to know exactly what it is you're getting now as you continue this process of investing in real estate you're going to learn more and maybe you don't need to hire a home inspector but right now you should hire one because you don't know what you're doing yet, right? Because that's the point of this video. The video is to try to help people that are just getting started, right? So one day, can you buy your rental properties without realtors? Heck yeah. Not today. One day, can you buy your properties without getting a home inspection? Yeah, <laughs> not today. Absorb the knowledge that these people have, right? Put that in your brain, man. Put those tools in your investor toolbox. Get it now, right? Consider this a little pay-to-play action, right? You're paying the inspector to go in and inspect this property, but you're going to learn things that you don't even know you don't know. Pay your realtor to help you find properties right now, and they're going to teach you things you don't know you don't know, right? One day you might not need them. You could extract more value out of your deals, but today you do, right? Next up, you want to get an appraisal. Now, truth be told, you don't really have to do much uh, because the very first step was to get pre-approved by a lender, right? So your lender is actually going to handle this. Your lender and your real estate agent are going to coordinate the appraisal, right? And this is the cool thing uh, with doing finance deals, right? Finance deals in real estate are cool for two reasons, right? Number one, it quadruples your buying power, right? To buy a $100,000 house, you only need $25,000 in cash, right? The bank is kicking in $75,000 to rental property investors, right? And if you're doing an owner-occupied deal, they kick in like 99% of the money, right? You might need 1000 they give you 99000 It's great stuff. But we're talking rentals today, so if you're trying to buy a $100,000 rental property, you only need to put down twenty five grand. Bank kicks in seventy five grand. That's amazing. So the fact that you could take your twenty five grand, turn it into a hundred grand, that's reason enough to finance a deal. Obviously, that's great. But you know what else it is? It's another stopgap to make sure you don't screw up your very first deal, right? These are all stopgaps, right? The realtor is supposed to help you not screw your deal up. The home inspector is supposed to help you not screw your deal up. The appraisal will definitely help you not screw your deal up. You want to know why? Because the appraiser don't even care. You know the appraiser don't even work for you though, right? The appraiser actually does not care about you. The appraiser cares about the bank because the bank is who hired the appraiser. Yes, you had to pay. You had to pay for it. But the appraiser really works for the bank, but they should, right? Because the bank's got way more in the game than you do, and the bank knows a lot more about real estate than you do. Remember, you're a brand new person. This is a bank. But it's a $100,000 house we're talking about. You only got $25,000 of your hard-earned money at play. The bank has $75,000. You think the bank is going to let you, some random noob, make some dumb decision and make a mistake and lose their seventy five grand? No, they ain't going to let you do that, no. So the bank is going to protect your butt because they're protecting their butt, right? And that's great. That's awesome. One day you'll move on to cash deals. Not today. Let's be safe, right? In real estate, folks, there's an unlimited amount of risks at play at all times, right? Utilizing this process that I've laid out for you on your first deal, your goal here is not to extract every penny out of the deal. It is to greatly reduce, 
right? Reduce the risk of you screwing your first deal up and losing money. Because guess what? People lose money in real estate every single day, right? But when you hire an appraiser, some of the people that don't lose money are going to be the bank because the appraiser ain't letting the bank screw it up, right? So now uh, you've had your inspection. You're past that. You're cool. Had your appraisal. You're past that. You're cool. You're getting ready to close. You're getting ready to get started. So what should you do now? Now is probably the time you need to hire a property manager, right? Now, if the property is local to you and you think you got what it takes to manage it yourself, hey, no problem, man. Go for it. But there's, you know, a whole other slew of lists and content and education we need to go over about how to actually teach you how to manage a rental property, right? So we have a lot of that stuff available on Holton Wise TV. A large portion of what we do is teach landlords how to be better, smarter, more educated, and sophisticated landlords, right? But that's not today's show. Today's show is to get you through the process, right? So uh, assuming you're not trying to be your own property manager and you're going to want to hire a professional, which I think is very smart, again, for the audience I'm talking to today, remember, can you buy rentals without a realtor? Hell yeah. Do I think you should do it on your first ever deal? Hell no. Can you buy properties without an inspection and appraisal? Definitely. Should you do it on the first one? Probably not. Property manager fits in the same boat. Learn from the property manager. Pay the property manager their fee and consider it a learning experience. Maybe you have the property manager get the thing off the ground for you do the work for the first year or two, and you're slowly absorbing all that information, just like you absorb the information from the appraiser, you absorb the information from the inspector, absorb the information from uh, your real estate agent, right? Put more knowledge in the noodle, man, right? So now you got your property manager lined up. Now you're ready. You go ahead and close escrow, and you're going to make sure you got a clean title, right? That's another reason you want to make sure you got a real estate agent, right? Real estate agents, they're working with title companies, legitimate title companies, and all those contracts, more or less, they all have specific verbiage in there that you got to close with the general warranty deed so it could be insured from a title insurance company, right? Let the pros do it. Folks, when you start getting into those deals where you're doing it by yourself without a real estate agent, you might meet some schmo on Craigslist. It's like, yeah, no problem. We got to sign it up with a quick claim deed. And you're like, okay, cool, no problem, bro. And you got no idea what that means. Next thing you know, you bought a $100,000 property that's got $600,000 of loans on it, but you had no idea because you never ran a title search and you didn't buy title insurance. Now you are just SOL. You don't want that to happen to you, but it definitely can. But it shouldn't happen to you if you follow my process here, right? Because you're going to hire a realtor. And you're going to make sure you get a warranty deed, not a quick claim deed. And if you want to hear about more about quick claim deeds and how people can steal your house because of quick claim deeds, i got a video on that too, right? So you're going to get clean title, clean insurable title, warrantyable title, okay? Next step, okay? Oh, no. Appears my mouse is not working. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What do, there we go. There we go. All right. So now we got a clean title. Now you own your house. Now you get to collect rent, man. Get that money. Don't worry about Bitcoin, baby. Rent's due. Now you're a landlord. Now you're a real estate investor. You own a rental property, a real life rental property. And this is just the very beginning of your career. And you are learning from all these people. You're learning from your appraiser, your inspector, your lender, your property manager, your realtor. And you're going to learn from your tenants. You're going to realize that being a property manager, property owner, it feels like a kick to the nuts sometimes, folks. It absolutely does. If you don't believe me, watch the Tenants from Hell show. But you know what? It's the beginning of your new career, and the sky is the limit from here, which leads you to the next step. Buy a boat. You do this enough, you stick with it long enough, folks, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to make that boat money, right? Real estate has helped me to become a millionaire. Real estate has actually helped more people become millionaires than any other industry in the world. So this is how you would get started, right? I've taken you from crawling to maybe, you know, a very slow walk, right? Like, not like a full-on kid walk, maybe like a toddler walk. Like, you're walking, but you don't really have very good balance, right? That's where you're at now that you watch this video. So make sure you're hiring those professionals, understanding what they're doing, taking as much knowledge as you can, and then you're going to, like, learn how to do a better deal on the next one and the next one and the next one, right? You're going to stack more deals together, your deals are going to become more profitable and more profitable and more profitable. And then eventually, man, you're going to be on a boat, baby. You're going to get that boat money, folks. I hope you enjoyed this show. Stick around to Holton Wise TV for more information on real estate investing. And if you're interested in partnering with my team 
to invest in our market, the market where we have a $75 million portfolio, uh, you click the notes below, book a free call with my team. We will talk to you about how we can take care of all 11 of the steps in this process for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.